Hey everyone and welcome to Off Stage, a 20 minute conversation with students, hobbyists and professionals from the world of music about music with me your host Anag and today I have guests Ujwal and Bharat. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hey Anag. Awesome, how are you? Good, good. Doing well. This is um first time I've had all drummers in one room. So I think this episode is going to be a pretty fun one. So can you guys give us little introduction to yourselves a little bit about yourselves? um uh, bharat oh okay uh, so i have been drumming for uh, about over 10 years now hmm. and uh, i'm almost 21 years old at this point hmm. started uh, learning in mumbai actually and when i moved to bangalore i started learning in octave yeah me and bharat were batch mates for a few years <laughs> yeah 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 fun. yeah 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 good old, good times and ujwal what about you Yeah so I started playing drums when I was 5 and a half 6 years old wow. and now I'm 21 so that's about 12 years I guess no for 16 years I guess my god nice yeah. on and off for 16 years huh yeah uh, so I started learning drums from Arun Kumar he's a very renowned Carnatic drummer hmm. so that's where I started learning that's where I did my grades hmm. and then recently I've gotten into metal drumming nice yeah that's about it nice so pretty basic question uh, why did you guys choose to play drums what made you realize like okay i want to play drums this is my calling this is what i want to do this is the instrument of my choice bharat uh, i was pretty young right i was like 10 years old so hmm. uh, i was just trying a bunch of stuff i actually was uh, in dance classes and hmm. uh, i kind of uh, stopped doing that so i i was looking for a next thing to was you i guess so my mm-hmm. mom like uh, she suggested i start playing drums so mm-hmm. kind of just went to a class and uh, fell in love i guess nice I, oh okay and uh, ujwal yeah so i have like a pretty different story from this so first i think when i was 3 or something mm-hmm. uh, i had this uh, dolak you know you used to get these dolaks in front of our houses back then mm-hmm. like people carrying stuff and mm. i got that started playing that and mm. then there's a temple near my house and mm. there's like a cultural fest that happens every year right so when i was four i went there i mean i used to always go there with my grandparents mm. when they saw arun kumar drumming i was mm. like what what is this huge thing that he's sitting behind why is he like hitting stuff with all four limbs right he was act like right off the bat very fascinating for me mm. came back home try to imitate that very cliche story on the vessel mm. and stuff like that and then i was too small so they didn't admit me to the classes yet i don't right. need to come next year when next year i was still small but then mm. told them i want to do it so yeah that was it nice i mean you did say it was a bit cliche but i think it was quite a nice story about the way side drums and that too you were very young at that time so yeah. we're getting inspired playing pots and pans yeah right So of course you guys have been playing for a very long time like you've said. So what are some of your um, biggest inspirations in drummers like who do you I mean I wouldn't say idolize specifically but who do you look at and what who who are the people who you saw that made you want to improve yourself and other than that also what generally motivates you to practice and get better and not get bored of the instrument after playing drums for like 10 plus years you know yeah Bharat Uh, to be really honest uh, i draw inspiration from people around me like apart from you too like mm. i draw inspiration from like my bandmates people mm. i have played with those mm. they're probably my biggest inspiration and obviously like the famous drummers around the world mm. pretty much yeah and even yeah. like my teachers biggest mm. inspiration they are for sure mm. and what about like practice and how do you not get bored of practicing and why you want to keep getting better yeah, i think uh, once i inculcated the routine hmm. it kind of it's pretty hard to like not practice i think hmm uh, so right. i i keep like coming back coming back to practice for like an hour just play a bunch of songs you know hmm. not really even practicing something specific like a an exercise or something but hmm it's like spending time with uh with the instrument is like something i enjoy so i keep like doing that 
just by myself i don't really try to force motivation or like uh try to sit down and practice because it kind of happens automatically for me hmm i mean i think i i get that a lot because yeah. the way i play drums and still you know practice is pretty similar when i like jamming songs and yeah yeah just spending time with the kit more than having a specific routine there's nothing wrong in having a routine of course but uh, yeah. Yeah, probably I mean, better I, to have a routine yeah it's probably better to have a routine if you want to get better and ujwal what about you your inspirations and your practice and what motivates you etc yeah like bharat said it's mm. like very you know uh, important that you surround yourself with people that inspire you right and uh, and even i uh, draw inspiration from my bandmates from my mm. fellow drummers mm. like jason sharath mm. gopi shravan pranav like there are there are a bunch of people that i know who i draw inspiration from apart from that but famous drummers matt gasta mm. luke holland um uh, larry lewis mm. these guys are like god to me like some day i would want to reach there so that is also one of my motivation like looking at mm. them playing stuff that i can't Hmm. as of now and trying to replicate that for now and then maybe inculcate that in my own playing later right and uh, one more thing that i want to mention is sometimes i mean we're all human beings sometimes we don't feel like practicing right right so there's this thing that i read about somewhere i don't remember where hmm. so if you try to change the sound of your drum kit uh, hmm. now and then right it will feel like you're playing a different instrument like for example change your setup if you're using hmm. three toms Like remove two toms, play with one tom, play with mm. just your floor tom, or remove everything. Just play on your snare and hi hats. Try to build a pocket around some mm. basic song. Mm. You know, like that. Uh, get yourself, you know, confined to a, a like draw limitations, and then mm. try to do something in those limitations. And you know, that is a great way to improve it. Improve in what you're doing. Nice. So that's that's one thing I do. Yeah, that's quite the tip. And uh, if. Uh... Of course, there were there are people watching. I hope you guys uh, take notes. This will help you a lot. And um, other than that, uh, for staying on the on a very similar topic, there are of course a lot of people who want to start drums or have just started drums. Like, and a lot of people you you don't see a lot of drummers. It's I mean we're not as rare as bassists. They are a different category only. but yeah. drummers are also pretty rare a lot of people have this problem where drums is like oh neighbors will complain it's a very loud instrument you have to invest in drums because you have to get so many parts you have to get cymbals you have to get acoustic kits so what pointers would you give for people who want to start out and what would you recommend like it it, it can be as basic as get an electronic kit instead of an acoustic kit but I'm sure uh, since you guys have been playing for so long you would have some pointers or something you guys could share with people who are just beginners who are or who are wanting to start drums Bharat well, well uh, the way I started I I didn't have a kit for like a year and a half when I started practicing and learning drums so uh, I had this practice pad that I used to practice on basically mm. and I would, uh pretend it's a drum kit and basically just jam on that mm. so that's a that's a good way i guess and even like playing on your lap even if you don't have a practice pad that's mm. that's a that's a good thing you can do and mm. maybe obviously like after like a year or maybe even like a few months when you're sure you're gonna like you're sure you're gonna invest in this your drumming thing you can go for a, an electric kit right or even just buy an acoustic kit and you know use these uh, muters you know yeah Pretty. drum mutes yeah. yeah that's probably the best way you can get started i think yeah yeah and ujwal yeah so i think he covered uh, everything about uh, the physical aspect of it but mm. uh, i want to say something that's different so mm. when people get into drums basically they want to like two three months into the uh learning process they want to be able to play songs they want to be able to do stick tricks because that's what they've seen that's what they want to do right. and they think it will come to them very fast and it doesn't take any practice or anything yeah. so i've had a lot of students so it's a like anything in life this is also a gradual process you need to put a lot of time you mm. need to have interest in it and only then will you see results gradually mm. so to any beginner that's starting out 
Hmm. The starting is the hardest process. Stick stick to it, and you will eventually see results, uh, provided hmm. that you put in the time. Yeah. And like he said, you don't really need a full drum kit when you start off. You can just have a practice pad. Like hmm. drums is an instrument where you can just like even play on your laps with your legs, tap on the floor. Right. You know stuff like that. For the longest time, even I didn't have a drum kit, and the mm. drum kit I have now is like ten years old, and only mm. now I've started expanding on cymbals and stuff. So, mm. like I said, this is also like a thing that you build on over time. So it's okay if you don't have anything. Also, you can start off. Yeah, couple of things I'd like to add to that. Stick tricks are not everything. A lot of people just want to like oh stick tricks. Like I want to look cool, but. Mm. Don't get into drums just to do stick tricks. You can do stick tricks without being able to play drums. Don't don't waste. I mean, stick tricks are great if you can do it. Awesome. But I wouldn't waste too much time just on uh, looking cool. Focus on your improving while while playing drums. And also, one thing I've learned the hard way: be in shape if you're a drummer. Have have stamina. Don't don't be um, very uh, very not fit because i am in a play like i can tell this out of experience where i have faced situations where there is stuff i can play but i but i'm not able to play it because of my physical limitations like stamina or calf strength or so i would say if you are an aspiring drummer and you want to get into things like metal play fast play for long durations of time stay fit i think that's uh, one very important thing for everyone so um moving on from that part of course you guys have been I, i've said this already so many times you guys have been playing drums for so long any experiences you guys would like to share because i'm sure you guys have been parts of have been part of many bands you play a lot of shows and any experiences that you would like to share that would make inspire people to want to start playing drums you know bharat if we uh, can we just start this and i want to think a little bit about it <laughs> sure <laughs> okay yeah go ahead Richard. uh so one thing i want to say is practicing at your home and uh, playing the same thing in front of like say 100 200 people those mm. are two different things right and when you start playing shows you kind of tend to be nervous on stage you kind of tend to make mistakes mm. but that's all a part of the process yeah i'm sure, like even when you're learning mathematics for say mm. you're going to make mistakes in the beginning and only then you you're going to get it right right so this right. is also like that and uh, So there's one tip that I want to give. Mm. You have to practice a song and be so, uh, you know, familiar with the song that you mm. won't be able to make a mistake even if you want to. Yeah. You know, if you practice like about ten times, say, your muscles, like your hands and le- legs, automatically do their thing. Yeah. You don't even have to think about it anymore. Yeah. Right. I'm sure yeah. you guys have felt that. You guys know that. Yeah. Your uh, thoughts will while playing a song, your thoughts will start drifting somewhere and all, and before you know it, the song's over, and you don't even know you played it. It's like that. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Like a pretty subconscious thing by then. Yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, there was something I was gonna say. I forgot now. <laughs> yeah. Want, ah, okay. uh, uh, yeah. Uh, one more thing is practicing by yourself and practicing with a bunch of musicians. Again, two different things hmm. because. you play with a song that song is quantized that song is perfect but right. when you play with real people that's not how it is yeah they they go in and out of time they're going to play bum notes and yeah. they're going to more uh, they're going to give you ideas they're going to tell okay maybe this sounds good can you try this out and they're going to put you on spot and you should be able to you know understand what they're saying and do somewhat on the same lines right you know? so, so yeah Nice, Bharat. Anything to add to that, or share some of your experiences of your own? Yeah, uh, the most important thing is practicing with a metronome for sure. Hmm. Uh, that's not something I do enough. I think even now, hmm. but uh, that definitely like improves your timing and your sense of rhythm and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, another thing is uh, practicing songs you like. Hmm. That's like. pretty obvious but like uh you start to discover your own sound and what you like in the different mm. genres and stuff mm. uh that's pretty helpful mm. and even if even when you're like practicing songs you know as the usual said it's quantized and stuff so mm. you're in a way like playing with a metronome like you're playing in time you know 
So mm. yeah, playing the songs properly is also like another uh, way of like improving your time. Right. And even try if you can like try to find musicians you can play with. Mm. That another like big challenge because yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I I think uh, to add on to Bharat's uh, practice with the metronome thing, I think again when you're practicing at home and you're practicing with songs or with the metronome, you are you are following something. But yeah. when you're playing with other musicians and when you're performing, they are following you. So you have to be the one that's on time. Yeah. Exactly. And and uh, if you and if you drag or speed up, then everyone will look at you like, dude, why he's playing on time? So I think that's also. Um, pretty important thing so There's yeah one more thing that i would like to add on if you don't mind please please so i think for all musicians it's very important for them to know at least uh, you know like staff notations you know music theory mm. to some extent i'll mm. tell you why mm. there are going to be instances in the future when you are like taking this as a prof- profession one guy is going to call you he's going to tell you okay so there's like a gig 3 days away you have mm. about 14 songs to learn <laughs> and imagine you don't know how to transcribe what oh, are you yeah. going to do you cannot learn 14 songs by ear and memorize everything uh, every single aspect of it in 3 yeah. days can you so <laughs> even <laughs> even if you can just note down the basic kick and snare pattern some very mm. important fill you know that is defining the feel of the song yeah that will make it so much easier for you so i think every musician must be able to transcribe at some level mm. yeah for sure yeah and i think also which is adding on to that um, having a good ear being able to listen for details and uh, being able to isolate the drums from a song so when you're listening to the song you should be able to listen to only the drums so you can focus on what's happening and how you and if you again like which was said if you have to play a gig for like 3 days from now and like you got a bunch of songs you should be able to isolate so i think training your ear also is a pretty important thing not it's not just about tick 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 on the drums yeah. and uh, the biggest of course uh, every drummer it's not about all the fills and all the fancy playing that's all great if you can do that awesome but one thing you should have down which is like grained into your drilled into your head is the standard beat kick and snare and hi hat and stay on time being tight so that is where one i think one very important thing yeah yeah and uh, since we are pretty soon to closing off what are you guys' future plans planning on continuing continuing your career in music or you know anything else bharat you want to start this one uh i think uh i might want to start like teaching a lot more hmm the you know make it uh have like a constant flow of income somehow mm. play play a lot of gigs mm. uh, for now that's pretty much it uh, mm. okay that's yeah. it's a pretty solid plan uh, ujwal yeah uh, like you said uh, i teach here and there a little bit like mm. three days a week i want to you know continue that make it a little more serious mm. and apart from drumming i also want to get into production aspect of things you know like mixing live shows or yeah. uh, or just being able to like handle a session of a recording right you know yeah that and being able to identify stuff like you just look at a console and like oh this is that and right. you can do this thing in the on that you know stuff like that hmm. so i want to get into the production aspect of it and yeah sometime in the future i want to be able to do this full time that is the goal yeah i think for a lot of us that who want to do music as a career that is the goal so yeah that's a pretty good goal to have so i think we're running out of time uh, thank thank thanks to the both of you for joining me in this episode of offstage this is episode 7 i this time i did not get it wrong last time i said episode 5 it was episode 6 but this time i know it is episode 7 and before we close off anything you guys want to plug social media as bands that you're part of spotify is anything bharat Uh, Bharat on drums, Instagram. Hmm. Pretty much it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, which one? I am uh, U J W A L underscore K S on Instagram. Hmm. Hmm. I also have a YouTube channel, hmm. and I play for a I play for a band called Kale Vikuri. I play for a band called Pineapple Express. When Gopi Shravan's on there, hmm. I play for a band called My Conscience, which is a 
an alt rock band i play mm. for a band called colors from which is indian classical band mm. and there's another death metal band that is not announced yet so stay, oh. uh, stay tuned for that nice <laughs> nice so like i said before thank you guys for coming on it was a lot of fun having you guys on this episode and uh, yeah see ya see ya to the yeah. audience okay. yeah okay. bye bye bye